Hey everyone, welcome to the Reloading Closet. This will be the first of a few short videos uh, showcasing anything from what I'm using to the processes in which I follow. Um, it'll give you a, a good idea of one, how simple it is to reload your own ammo, and, and two, just some good pointers uh, that I've picked up along the way that really make the process seamless and why I do certain things or certain steps in a certain order. Um, these are not exactly the bare necessities of the things you'll need to reload, but these are definitely the things you're going to need to make your life simple while reloading. Uh, yes, I am in my closet. Um, a few months ago, actually, right about the start of COVID, just to give you a little backstory, uh, cleaned out the closet, got rid of a lot of old clothes, realized I had a lot of space. I originally was going to start planning on reloading in the garage, but down here in Georgia in the summer, it sucks. And it wouldn't have been exactly a good conducive to making good ammo because of humidity and everything else. So I found some space in my closet and I went to town. So for starters, you've got to have a good base. As you can see here, I've got two layers of one inch thick plywood mounted to the wall. These are heavy duty brackets from Lowe's mounted to the studs of the wall. Um, I did originally want to put a two by four underneath of the press, but as time went on I realized it really didn't need it um, these shelves or the brackets have held up pretty good um, and if you're putting a whole lot of pressure on that press there's probably something wrong anyways so uh, but to start things off obviously you need to have a press um, there's multiple different kinds this is your pretty standard this is a rock chucker supreme uh, from RCBS obviously you can see a lot of my stuff is RCBS no I'm not a fanboy um, I started out with one of their kits and just, I like their products and I've been able to find things at a decent price. Um, so next is the powder thrower. As you can see there, it's on a stand, um, mounted to the table. Uh, this is where you'll dump your powder in from the top and you can either throw it into the shell casing itself or that little tin bronze plate right there for if you want to measure each load. But it's very simple. It's so up, drop, down it reloads it, or it set, resets the load. You can adjust the load using the set screw right here, and then you have a locking nut. Um, like I said, it is mounted to the floor or to the table, so it's not going anywhere, and it does throw very consistently. I love doing 300 blackout with this thing. Um, I can throw 50 loads in probably a matter of five or 10 minutes, and then getting them ready to go. Uh, six five cream more you're using a different kind of powder i'll get into that later um, but i measure each one of those loads with the beam scale uh, next you're going to want some kind of trimmer all right you got to trim down the casings to the recommended trim length which you can find in one of those reloading books right there by nosler um nosler lineman hornaday all of them are good they give you what you need um, to start doing the ammo next thing i'll go when it comes to measuring is a good set of calipers this is from hornaday um, they, they had great reviews i've had no issues with them so far um, very accurate very consistent another measuring tool is the beam scale um, also you can see there in the picture is an electronic scale from frankfurt arsenal um, the beam scale that it's pretty much the end all be all and they're going to be the most accurate and they're going to give you the most consistent readings. Um, they are a little finicky as far as getting them leveled. Um, I'm in a process of right now of maybe using a camera hooked up to the phone. That way I can get a consistent view. Because um, it's like using nice iron sights. You got to have that sight picture the same every time to make sure you're getting the exact same load. Um, the electronic scale, um, it works. I use it for setting up my powder thrower because it's much faster than the beam scale. Um, I get it close or get it onto what I need and then I'll verify it with the beam scale and then from there on out I usually just measure with the beam scale. Um, that silver hourglass looking thing right there is a powder trickler. Um, usually when you're using the powder thrower you want to be just slightly under the charge you want to reach and then you will use the powder trickler to just trickle paddle powder into the uh, tray and get you to where you want to be. Um, one of those convenience things that I have is this, uh, this station right here. 
All right, it's got a chamfer deburr. It also has a, um, this one is for small rifle, a military crimp remover, because uh, the primers will be crimped when using military brass or um, different kinds of brass. There is a pocket, a primer pocket cleaner, and then a neck cleaning brush. Um, this is, like I said, one of those fancier machines. A lot of people really don't need them. Um, this thing will pretty much cover everything you need to do as far as chamfer and deburring. This will not remove the crimp, but there's also different tools that you can use um, to remove the crimp. All right, and then right here you have a lube pad. Kind of a pain to open up with one hand, but there's a foam pad in there and you'll put lube down on it. Um, I'll showcase that in one of my next videos. That's for lubing up your brass when you go through the sizing process. Um, it's very consistent with the amount of lube that it puts down. I have not had any kind of dented brass or anything like that. Um, and I'll go more into that when time comes. Uh, another good thing to have here are loading trays. All right, usually you can find something like this. You can handle multiple different kinds of brass. And you can flip it over. There's some other slots in there you can use as well. And there you've got a bullet box so you can transport, you know, all your loaded ammo to the range safely. All right, and then your components. Oh, almost forgot. So then you're going to need a priming tool as well, and that's what this does. And it uses specifically RCBS um, shell holders, which look right that, like that right there. That's actually a Hornaday uh, shell holder. Just came in today. Finally, this is for 9 millimeter. The one thing I've been waiting on to get working on that stuff right there. Some subsonic 9mm to shoot out of my 320 suppressed. But anyways. Um, and then obviously, like I said, your components. Your powder. Your primers. Your bullets. All different kinds of bullets. Brass. And then a lot of stuff that I've loaded already. And some other stuff up there. Um, and then your dies. All right. And these are the different calibers I'm loading for. 6.5 cream more, 2.23, 5.56, same thing. 300 blackout and 9mm Luger. Your basic ammo of uh, what things are, what most people are shooting today. Also, I have a toolbox. It has all my extra tools in it, Allen wrenches. Um, I keep my collets for my trimmer my uh, heads for the comparator gauge, all my different shell holders. Um, this also opens up. You got screwdrivers, wrenches, um, other odds and end things you might need uh, when dealing with reloading stuff. A good trash can. All right, and a couple of ammo cans. Uh, they've got uh, 6.5 Creedmoor in there. That Those are not diapers. That's actually a whole box of 6.5 Creedmoor brass that has yet to be prepped. It's been tumbled, but it needs to be prepped. Um, I had like 1,300 casings of 6.5 Creedmoor, so I'm set to go there. I saved everything I've shot through my RPR. All right, and then a good five-gallon bucket. I've actually got two of these, um, one for dirty brass, one for clean. And this brass right here is getting ready to get tumbled um and um i'll go on to the next video and showing the process of deep priming all right stay tuned so some things i missed in my first video um what we have up here this is a media separator uh, this is what i use to separate the stainless steel media that i use for wet tumbling um separates it from the brass makes the cleaning a lot easier and then just a regular old food dehydrator. I uh, use this to dry the brass after it's been tumbled. Um, and there's some actually some stainless steel media right there. Those are pins. Uh, as you see, they're not in the tumbler. I don't use them anymore. Uh, they're actually almost a, exactly 6.5 millimeters long, and which creates havoc when you're tumbling 6.5 mil, 6.5 brass, whether Grendel, Creedmoor, all the different 6.5 family brass. Um, this gets stuck in the neck casings, or in the, the neck of, of the casing, and it's a bitch. 
So I stopped using that and switched to the Southern Shine Stainless Media, which has been awesome. Um, the only thing I don't have to show you is the tumbler itself. It's actually out in the garage because it's quite loud when I tumble. So I just leave it out there, but um, I'll cover that in the next video.